price. A little bit about Paso Juan. So, looked it up last night. And this is a art exhibit that was based on a guy who apparently was an artist, born in 1906. He went on to do a lot of things in New York, moved back to Georgia. His, uh, uh, I guess his mother died. Uh, the exhibit went down. I guess that was in 1985. When it, in 1985, he came back. Apparently, he committed suicide. That's kind of a sad story. We're gonna find out a little bit more about it when we talk to these guys when we get there. Um, I don't know what to expect. I've never been here before. I've looked it up online. It looks pretty cool, um, but it looks like a seven acre art exhibit. I think we're gonna do some footage. We're definitely gonna get in the air and get some aerial around it. We're also gonna to talk to a few people when we get there, just to learn a little bit more about what Pasaquan, Paraquan, Pelican. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's Paraquan, Paraquan, Pasaquan, Pasaquan. Yeah, Pasaquan. Right. Both we're gonna say Pasaquan. Pasaquan. All right, we both gonna be wrong together. I guess so. All right. <laughs> Misery loves company, man. I don't wanna be wrong by myself. <laughs> Look, they'll let us know. All right. All right. <laughs> so we're, we're, when we get there, we're gonna try and talk to a few people, just learn a little bit more about it. I won't lie to you. When I looked it up, it looks a little. Um, I won't say cultish. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was thinking witch doctor when I looked at it a little bit, man. man. I was like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that, man. Look, if they cast any spells, cast them on Chris. Don't cast them on Tim. I want to share, it, man. Let's spread the wealth, man. Let's do it together. I mean, you put me on a brother and everything. What? We we ain't brothers when there's when there's voodoo around, guys. Okay. Right, Look, that's when it. you sleep, that's how you want to do you, it, man. You, you, you keep you all that in your in your apartment for me. <laughs> You brought it up, man. I mean, <laughs> at least you can do a share with me since you brought up the whole subject. But that's all right. Uh, all right. We pass the coin. Pass the coin. Okay. Yep. Pass the coin. Go, right. go get Chris. <laughs> get Chris. Everybody hates Chris like this show. Right? All right. But, I mean, <clears throat> on the real, I looked at it. I looked at it, it looks cool. I thought about that, man. But when I saw all that totem pole stuff, you know, I'm thinking it looks cool and everything. I'll just say, please don't be a curse on it, but it looks great. Uh, it definitely looks well worth the trip to go see, man. There's something you'll see all the time. I love the artwork. I love the colors and everything, man. So I figured it's definitely worth the trip, and I definitely want to see how it looks from the air. What do you think? I think it's going to be cool from the air. Seven acres of, of, of area. I think this is going to be more of an art exhibit. Look, there's lots of colors. It's a sunny day. It's a great day today. It's a great day for a road trip. Definitely a great day to go find something new and explore. So I think it's going to look cool from here. I'm, I'm hoping that when we get there, we get to talk to some people to tell us a little bit more about the so-called witch doctors that he keeps talking about. <laughs> hey, man, I'm hoping I'm hoping they're not witch doctors. Man. I'm just joking about that. Man. But you don't <laughs> have to late. put it on. It's man. too late. You know, it's so, on you. So why you got to try to wake up the karma, man? Let the karma <laughs> sleep, man. Let the karma sleep. <laughs> I mean, there's millions of people come and get missed, but we don't need to attract attention to us, man. But that's all right. That's all right. We've been doing so well anyway. Uh, all these fans and all subscribing to us, man. We don't know. We don't need nothing to throw our subscribers off, man. We've been getting bombarded with all that, bro. Hey. You know. So it's all right if we get some wins out of subscribers. Yeah, right. You know, as long as they're friendly with out to subscribers, it's cool. It's all right. The more the merrier. <clears throat> I'm noticing the closer we get to this place, um, I mean, it's kind of funny. The more beautiful the landscape um, starts um, looking. Um, I lived in Georgia probably about half my life, and there's a lot of territory. I didn't even realize how beautiful the landscape is, you know? Well, look, yeah, you know what? That's a good point. So for all of our subscribers out in London and California, we're going to give you a little taste of some southern living yeah. of, of how things look out here, the mm -hmm. landscape. You know, don't get jealous. I know you're gonna want to see some trees. Where you are, you probably don't have that many trees. So we're gonna give oh, you a little trees, bro. Who has trees? London got trees. Look, you have trees. They got trees, man. I was in the military. I was over there, man. They got no. trees, man. They got the Loch Ness monster, bro. They got all that Ooh. junk. They got Nessie, Loch Ness, all that stuff over there. Wait, that's Scotland. What well, Scotland is in England? Right? I tell you what. If you're in Scotland and you want us to come and, and view your trees and look at a lot of this monster, send us a comment down below so we'll see if we want yeah. to come to Scotland. You better give the good go fund me, man, because that's a <laughs> low man. That's going to be a, low, a lot of money for that trip, man. We're so. going to get Chris on a plane. Uh, Chris don't do planes, man. I thought you knew that, man. <laughs> Chris don't do, don't do planes. We're going to get Chris on a plane. Man, you better get me on the love boat. <laughs> Alright, so for so some of you guys, I guess the trees in Scotland, okay, maybe the trees in Scotland, I don't know. 
Um, I've been to London, I've been to Scotland. Yeah, mountains, all kind of goodies over there, man. <laughs> Tell me. But we're going to show, for folks who live in the big city, you're in your apartment or you're in some high rise or you're just in somewhere in New York or LA or something like that, we're going to give you a little taste of something. And I know a lot of you have been here already, but that's okay. This is how it looks when we drive around a little bit uh, on our on our southern adventures. And we'll be coming up to this soon, by the way. We'll be coming up to different areas of the U.S. We're going to get Chris on a plane. I may have to give him a pill. He's going to wake up. <laughs> We're going to start calling him B.A. from the 18th. Oh, you're going to do the 18th? Wait a minute. You know what, man? <laughs> coming up on the entrance now. Coming up on the entrance now. Oh, got the fence closed. Oh, man. Open up a tent. All right. There it is. Okay. Get the sign. You have to pass a quan showing the sign. There it is. All right. Pass there. Got it. Get it open. All right. We're good. <laughs> I bet you got that though, didn't you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, we finally made it. We're at Pasaquan. We're going to take a look at a few things when we get in here. It's almost 10 o'clock. They're not open yet, so we're going to wait about five minutes, give them a call on the phone, see if they'll let us in, see if we can meet a few people when we get in there, talk to them, and see what Pasaquan is all about. Let's do it. All right, Tim and Chris, we finally made the Paraquan. I don't know if I'm saying it the right way. What's your name? Pasaquan. Pasaquan. Oh, Pasaquan. Man, we're both wrong. I told you we both going to be wrong, Pas man. See? Hey, Pasaquan. So we both wrong on that. It's Pasaquan. It's Pasaquan. Right. I told him it was Pasaquan on the road. He you didn't. Know but you thought y'all saw the film. All right. Was, you know I said it's Pasaquan. All right. What's your name again? Uh, Charles Fowler. Charles Fowler. Charles Charles Fowler. <laughs> Charles Fowler. <laughs> Charles Fowler is going to tell us a little bit about Pasaquan. And uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been working... At the site for about four and a half years. Uh, I've been living on the site for two and a half years. You've been living here for two years? Yes. So you sleep in here? I sleep in a small building that the artist built uh, called the Caretaker's Cottage. He built okay. this for someone to take care of the place uh, after his passing. Okay. Cool okay. place to live. So answer a question for us. We had a debate coming up here. Okay. Are there any voodoo things going on in Pasquan? Uh, not that I know of, but um, I, I, <laughs> but I, I do think his spirit is out here. Um, you know. Visit Chris. Spirit, visit Chris. Hey, I'm we, cool with a good spirit, man. It's all right. It's yeah, all right. Logos is a good spirit. I'm we, cool with We it. actually had uh, two ghost hunting groups, and I can't remember their names, but they came out here and say that his spirit is in the uh, his original bedroom, which is now the bathroom, or one of the... Uh, uh, buildings with the giant eyes watching over Pasaquan. So maybe his spirit is still watching over this place. Okay. Now you see Pesic what he Chris. did? Pesic That's because of him. I told him to leave <laughs> karma alone. Now look what we just look what we just found out with him. See? Alright. So okay, Pasaquanians. First I'm thank you for saying that. Because I mm. couldn't I couldn't figure out how to say that either. You would have never guessed that when I'm telling <laughs> so, you. So so Pasaquanians, did he make that up? Or did he say, okay, they came to me as a vision and they are calling themselves Pasaquonians? So, yeah, that's a great question, you know, <laughs> because uh, some people debate, was he making all of this up? Was this just someone, uh, an artist, making up a story to sell? Or did he really believe it? And uh, living out here and learning about him, I believe in both those stories. I think, you know, he's an artist and he's trying to sell himself, but he also... You know, you don't spend 50 years just dedicated to uh, one particular vision of the Pasaquoians, right? And he believed that the Pasaquoians channeled to him from the future, telling him to build this place, and he would be the first ever Pasaquoian, and his name would be forever known as Saint Ohm. Ohm. Eddie Owens Martin, E O M. Okay. Eddie Martin, Eddie Owens, Ohms? Oh. Uh, Eddie Owens Martin. Owens, okay. Yeah, and he believed that the Pasaquoians is this tribe from the far, 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 far future uh, where mankind has rejected technology and all race and all religions eventually become uh, joined together so it can coexist in harmony in the future. Um, so, so he, you know, around that time, 1935, the Great Depression, you know, happened. The world, uh, World War One, the Ku Klux Klan was running rapid. He was uh, homosexual back then, and he felt like an outcast. And he just saw so much turmoil in mankind. And he felt like mankind was doomed unless we look to the past and preserve ideals that pr promote peace and coexistence amongst everybody. And he placed them all in. Pa and so, Pasaquan's a utopia in the future where all 
people, no matter who or what you are, you are welcome and belong at Pastor Klein. Oh, nice. All right, so one thing. I don't know if the story is true or not. It could be. It may not be. Comment below. Tell me your thoughts on it. But I will say everyone getting along together, I'll take that. I think that, I think that beats out all. But Charles is going to take us on an exhibit and tell us a little bit more about what all this is about in detail as we visit each one of these. And, of course, at the end, Chris is going to give us a flight and see what it looks like from there. So before we get started, have you heard anything weird or seen anything strange <laughs> since you've been out here? Uh, you know, I, I guess I've heard a couple of like uh, weird things where I felt like it was a spirit out here, you know. And before I moved out here, before I actually started working on the site, uh, before the Kohler Foundation came here and started okay. restoring, because I worked with the restoration. Okay. Um, I was told that there would be like headless dogs that run around at night or humanoid bat mm. figures who would watch over the site. I haven't seen any of that yet, okay. but uh, right. maybe one day. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So this is uh, St. Owen's workshop. Uh, if you were here while he was alive, there would have been uh, beaded curtains on almost every doorway or uh, hanging on the walls, you know, and they would make intricate patterns. And uh, I was told he hired mostly young African-American men from the town of Buena Vista, or if you're from this region, they pronounce it Buena Vista. Right. Uh, and he, in the 70s, I was told he paid his workers $10 an hour and um, gave a couple of his workers a place to stay out here. Um, and within 30 years, they were able to build him and his workers, St. Home and his workers were able to build all of this, sculptures, furniture, uh, structures, everything within 30 years. Oh, nice. Before uh, he unfortunately took his own life in Georgia. So when all these sculptures, are these the things that he thinks he's seeing? Are these the people he says is coming to him and telling him about the future? Yes. So each one of these represents someone he thinks is talking to him. So that's uh, so I think he thinks that the people of Pasaquan have talked to him, but it seems like you know there's a lot of speculation that some of these sculptures are based off people he knew in real life. Okay. So this is his, uh, this is Eddie's kitchen. You know, if you were lucky enough to uh, have come back here, which not a lot of folks were, um, only those who were close to him were able to be served dinner, um, and he was serving probably two of his favorite food items, canned wontons and collard greens. Um, wontons. Yeah. Collard greens. <laughs> he, uh, he, he thought both of them were quite exotic. This is where St. Ohm would uh, have recorded some of his dream of conscious musings. He would have a boom mic hanging down the ceiling, and he would then turn on the recorder and just sort of just have a stream of conscious, uh, you know, thoughts just being recorded. He would talk about the importance of the turban, uh, talk about the importance of long hair. He actually believed that the longer your hair is, the more likely you are to receive good ideas and positive energies. Um, and, and, you know, and I may have subscribed to that thought lately, but... Um, hey, you know, come on. Okay, all right. But when uh, he actually started to lose his hair, he would braid his beard hair and tie it on top of his head so he can receive to re uh, continue to receive positive energies. Right. And these folks that you see on the walls, these are more passive coins, but you may notice they're standing awkwardly. It's because they're not standing, they're actually levitating. Oh. Uh, one day, someone asked St. Ohm, uh, hey, if this is the future, this is passive one. How do they uh, tr get around in the future? Is this is this Eddie here? That is Eddie right there. All right, let's go zoom in on him. These passive coins would wear uh, levitation suits, also known as uh, power suits. And these circles were pressed down on pressure points in your body, uh, and were pressed down on enough pressure points to release enough energy chakra for one to then levitate. And because Georgia is the birthplace of Pasaquan, it is hot in the summertime, right? It is. Um, hot. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Pasaquans in the future would wear air-conditioned helmets as they fly around in the future to stay cool. Uh, so yeah.
So these are the passive coins. These are these are the passive coins. These are actually uh, the muses of passive coin. Okay. Uh, they are the muses of art, literature, theater, and music. Uh, so Saint Ong would actually sit right here with this statue sitting right now, and he would uh, have drum circles in this room, and he would preach about how art can heal one's soul and help promote peace and coexistence. That's why everybody's always so happy, and they look so happy and peaceful all the time. That mm -hmm. Because that have a lot to do with it. Yes, you know, it's uh, these are artistic folks, and you know, this is the utopia of Pasadena. Okay. This place was actually recently uh, restored by the Kohler Foundation. They came here in 2014, uh, spent about two to three million dollars in the entire restoration. Before the Kohler Foundation got here, uh, this place was sort of on the verge of disappearing. Um, you know, this floor actually did not exist anymore. Termites came in and ate up the floor and it collapsed and we had to get a crew to help recreate it. So the Kohler Foundation came here in 2014, took about two years to restore everything, oh. meaning the paintings, the drawings, the art, I mean sculptures, the floors, the roofs, every single thing you see out here was re uh, restored. And then now we've been open as a, a, a re newly reopened museum for Passaquina St. Ohm uh, since 2016. Um, so yeah. Let me uh, ask you a question. Um, yes. What's the significance of this art here? Um, is this so this is one of St. Ohm's first sculptures he created out here. Uh, you know, I guess it was uh, based off of a sh the, the goddess Shiva and Kali oh. put in together. You know, he's combining cultures. He's or uh, combining things. You know, um, and as you see when you walk around all over the place, you will find different symbols from different cultures and religions all coexisting amongst each other. Okay. You're probably wondering, you know, how does one guy afford all of this? Yes. And so after his visions, you know, he sort of, he stopped uh, being a prostitute or what we like to say midnight cowboy type hustler. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. And, um, and became a fortune teller. And he would tell fortunes off the streets of Greenwich Village um, and actually start picking up artwork. And so he would go to museums and libraries and learn about art, learn about different cultures, all in the museums and libraries, and then uh, took all that knowledge and put it in Passaquan. And then when he returned to Georgia, he continued telling fortunes. And that's how he's able to afford um, almost everything out here. You well, I did you know, notice We that. do get uh, gray rat snakes, uh, but they tend to stay off the property nowadays. Um, but St. Ohm actually built this, uh, this uh, uh, mystic persona by telling people that, you know, he, he would go into the town of Buena Vista um, and have snakes in his pockets, <laughs> and he would flash it to people so that they would know that he has snakes on him. Possibly they were fake snakes, you know, but but he, <laughs> but would also he did do it. <laughs> yes, but then he would tell folks, I can summon snakes from the woods to attack anyone who came to do harm. Mm. He would hear that people will say that he could put curses on you and your family, and he would never deny it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he would just keep pushing this mystic persona, uh, you know, because being a gay man in the middle of the South was, uh, you know, may be dangerous in the middle of nowhere, so he had to find creative ways to protect himself. Little sandbox here. So I mentioned earlier that there was like a Commodore's connection, right? Okay. Um, so uh, this young man worked out here with St. Ohm. I'm gonna keep his name out of it okay. uh, because his story is pretty interesting. But you know, I'm sure parts of it he doesn't want to know. But this young so, guy. So hold on. So <laughs> the Commodores, you make the connection. We're gonna <laughs> pretend we don't know who he is, but we're gonna talk about it. So St. Ohm uh, had this one young guy who worked out here, and he was quite close to this fella. He was considered Eddie's right hand man. He trusted him with everything, you know. Um, and so one day he approached this young guy and he said, hey, 
Would you like to be the next pass of coin? Would you like to have everything when I'm gone? Because at this point, St. Owen was definitely thinking about his mortality and the longevity of Pasaquan. You know, he wants it to continue to go into the future. He wants it to be taken care of. Uh, but he told this young individual he had to give up two things, television and women. This young fella at the age of 22 declined saying, oh, he said, I just could not give up television. Uh, so obviously, while he was telling us the story, we were thinking he was pulling our legs. So uh, we, we asked him, did Sainom ever tell him his fortunes? And he said yes, and it came, all of it came true. So Sainom, the first part of the fortune, he said to this young guy, uh, when you leave Pasaquan, you will find success in music and politics. So. Uh, when this young individual left Pasaquan, he became the backup drummer for the band The Commodores. And while, uh, after touring with them, he returned to Buena Vista and ran for mayor and was elected. Ah. Unfortunately, um, St. Arnold told this young man that he will go away for a while. Unfortunately, he will go away for a while. This young individual was uh, arrested for smuggling certain contraband through the mayor's office um, and was sent away for 10 years. I've been told by some local folks that they think he could have been framed, um, but who knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but don't then, um, but Eddie said, don't worry, when you come back, you'll be happy and content in life and you will find success again. <laughs> this young individual returned <laughs> to Vista. He, um, you know, opened up a bar uh, deeper in the woods called uh, the Top Hat and had uh, similar mandalas that you see in here. He was able to approach St. Ohm and ask him to help design similar mandalas. So there's more Pasacoin artwork deeper in the woods uh, oh, wow. out there. So yeah, so that's the story and the slight connection to the Commodores to Pasacoin. Oh, wow. uh, it definitely looks like he has an affinity for snakes. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it everywhere. Yeah, you'll see serpentine, uh, serpentine patterns all over the place. <laughs> I'm noticing that. You know what? I feel a lot of peace here, though. A lot of love thing. I mean, when you look at all these people smiling and everything, it does look like a nice place to be at. It, yes. You, you get a good feeling being here. Mm -hmm. a, yeah, a I lot have... of peace and everybody getting along. You feel like there's a lot of. You feel people, everybody gets getting along. It feels like a utopia or something. Yes. Kind of deal. And actually, that. and I, 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 when I get visitors from all over the world, I've had families from mm -hmm. India, England, Paris, France, all come here, mm -hmm. and they always, uh, and you know, everybody who's come out here, mm -hmm. one, this place is sort of in the middle of nowhere, so yeah. you have to want to be at Pasacoan. I recommend um, all of my subscribers to come to this place. You do get some sort of a peaceful feeling here. I'm not kidding. I don't know what it is, so you guys should come here. I, you feel a, a lot of love and peace here. You do feel some kind of thing here. I don't know what it is, but yeah, you do feel it. Yeah, and you know, people tell me every time they walk in that when they walk into the gate, they feel this overwhelming joy and they mm -hmm. feel happy. Um, and it could be that they've been on this journey to come here and they finally made it to their destination. And it could be the colors, the, all the smiles you mentioned. Mm -hmm, you know? Yeah. It's just all this stuff that adds up. Mm -hmm. You feel welcome. You feel very welcomed here. Yeah. So we just got done with our tour. Thank you, Charles, for taking us on our tour for Pasapon. We really appreciate everything you've done. It's very interesting. Uh, Chris, what else do you have coming up from the channel? We've been working on a fan film. We got a trailer coming out. We asked you guys, would you like us to do reaction? That way we can be bringing you content um, day by day. Basically, it takes time for us to get uh, permission to fly to certain areas, so that's why we usually do these like once a week. Thank you again. We're well, gonna let Chris get up in the air and take a, uh, some cool aerial footage, and uh, we're yeah. gonna go away. And I would just like you to say, you know, we're open Friday to Sunday, 10 p.m. to 5 p.m., and we're closed uh, during the months of July and December. We're going off university hours uh, because we're part of Columbus State University. So. Perfect. All right, we're about to get this flight on too. I uh, can't wait to see how this place looks from the air. Uh, let's do it.
if you like what you just saw, if you saw what Chris did, you like this area, you saw what Charles said about the time period, subscribe, comment, give us a thumbs up, let us know if you like what we did, and we'll see you soon.